Hey guys, it's Joe the Android Guy. Today we're going to talk about batteries and why they're holding us back and what we can do with our smartphones and our tablets. Let's go take a look. All right. So batteries are a specification that are included really on every single cell phone and tablet that you get. They just don't mean much. And why is that? Because most of us don't understand battery technology. So for example, that is an old Nexus One. See that? It's got a 1400 milliamp hour battery in it and it runs at one gigahertz. I think it runs at one gigahertz. It's been so long. This is a Galaxy Nexus. It's a dual core 1.2 gigahertz and it's got a 1750 milliamp hour battery in it. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, if you take a look at your battery, you're gonna see something that says how many milliamp hours it is. You're also gonna see something that says how many volts and how many watt hours, okay? The volts just kind of ignore, they're pretty much standard, 3.7 in this case. That's what our phones use to run on. Volts, well, that's electromotive force. Anyway, let's not get into too much uh, detail on electronics. You can do that if you want to. And if you'd like to know, you know more about battery theory and electronics, leave me a comment down below. I can get into that detail if you want, but let's keep things a little bit high level. So today, let's, let's just suffice it to say, voltage is gonna remain the same. 3.7 volts is that one variable. We're gonna lock it in and leave it over there, okay? Now we've got the other, and that's the milliamp hours. That is literally the capacity of the battery. Now what do I mean by capacity? If we consider voltage to be flow, which essentially it is, and milliamp hours or amp hours to be capacity, which it is, then we can start to understand how batteries work and where some of our challenges lie. So I keep saying capacity. Let's picture your battery as a jug of water. One gallon jug, let's make things easier. Two liter, four liter, whatever for, for our metric friends. But you've got this jug of water. Now there are a couple of things. I mean, it's, it's got a predetermined amount of stuff in it, right? Water in this case. And it's got a specific flow rate. You can't pour the stuff, the water, out of that jug any faster than the hole in the, you know, the neck of the jug will let you do it. Okay, so that's your voltage, essentially. So we've got a gallon of water. Well, how long is that gallon of water going to last? If I have the lid on it and set it on a shelf, it's going to last almost indefinitely. You know, sure, you're going to have some evaporation through the plastic, you're, it's going to go bad, and it's going to have a funny taste after a while, but you're, you're still going to have about a gallon of water in that even years later. Well, in batteries, it's kind of the same thing. If you just set this on the shelf and leave it alone, it's going to remain charged for months and months and you can come back and use it and it's great. If you leave it inside your phone and your phone is turned off, not just screen off, but entirely off, it's going to last for months and months and months. Hey, wouldn't that be a cool spec? Battery life, three months. Just don't turn it on. Okay, maybe not. So turning it on, turning your phone or your tablet on is akin to drinking out of that jug of water. If you are, let's say it's a nice, cool spring day, like it is out here in Utah, and I'm watching the garden, I'm watching the grass grow, I'm watching the birds, I'm not doing anything, I'm just sitting down relaxing, I'm sipping at my water. It's gonna last me all day, and I'm probably gonna have some left over. See, I'm not using it much. I'm not doing much. Now, if I decide that I wanna go out for a run on the island right next to me in the hot with no shade, and, and there's a no wind coming across, so I'm just sweating and sweating and sweating and I'm not cooling down. Well, I'm gonna be drinking water left and right. I'm gonna be going through that and I'm gonna to have to stop and get refills on my water because I'm gonna use it all up. It's the same gallon of water, but because I'm exerting more energy, I have to drink more water. By the way, a gallon of water a day is kind of a good target number for you, just FYI. With batteries, it's kind of the same way. Obviously, you're not storing water in them, you're not storing a gallon of anything in them. What you're doing is you're storing energy. We'll get to how it does that just really high level in a minute. But the more you use it, you know, the, the more you open that jug and pour it out into a glass and drink it, 
the faster your water's going. Well, the more you turn on your phone and use it, use your battery, use your screen, use your radios, use your speaker, all that stuff, the more you use it, the faster it's going to drain, just like the jug of water. Okay, we all got that. Let's move on. Okay. A jug of water works by having a big empty space, without holes in it obviously, that you can fill up and then a lid that you put on. Right? Pretty simple. When you want to get water out of it, you reverse the process. Take off the lid, pour the jug, put the lid back on. With a battery, it's a little bit different. Inside of a battery, you've essentially got three things. You've got an anode, you've got a cathode, you've got an electrolyte. Now, I'm not going to go into tons of detail unless you want me to go into tons of detail. Again, leave comments down below. Suffice it to say, on one side you have positive ions, on one side you have negative ions with a lack of electrons. So essentially you're storing all of your electrons on one side, they're not on the other side, and you're insulating those two with an electrolyte solution. So you know, if you imagine two wires that you're holding close together, as long as there's a gap in between there, power electricity is not going to flow between them, but as soon as you get it close enough, it's going to arc across. Make sense? Batteries don't really work exactly that way, but it's kind of what it does. So when you charge up the battery, you're essentially replenishing all of those positive electrons or positive ions. Is it positive or negative? I can research that if you want me to know. Anyway, you're putting the juice on one side and not on the other side, and then when you need to use it, you're reversing that process. You're allowing the flow to go across. And it's that electrolyte solution that lets the electrons travel through and power flow and whatnot. Now, this is direct current, so it goes from one side to the other side and out. And I know it's not just one side and the other side. There's lots of little cells in here. So, trying to keep battery technology simple is really hard. Okay, stick with me. Take a deep breath. All right, so we've got these batteries and anodes, cathodes, electrolytes, and they're all crammed in there really, really, really tight. You can't cram them much tighter because, again, when you put those two wires close together, eventually they're going to arc. When they arc, that's called a short, by the way, it's going to let the electrons flow across and that will discharge the battery. That's why you don't ever want to short your pins on the top because it'll get really hot really fast and burn stuff out and cause damage. So don't do that. That's what happens on the inside. In fact, lithium ion batteries are famous. Dare I say infamous. I know I pronounced that wrong, but go back to uh, the three amigos and see what I mean. It's a funny show. But what happens is inside, inside, things happen. It's not just a solid piece in there. And some of these batteries were built without really high well, standards, I guess. Uh, they weren't high quality. And there was stuff in there, in between that space, that kind of bridged the gap just a little bit, just enough that when it got hot, sure enough, the electrons jumped across and it shorted, it got hot, and well, fire and explosions and all kinds of stuff that you don't want to be happening with the cell phone in your pocket. That should be all fixed now because quality standards have improved, but it goes to show you that you can't cram the anodes and cathodes closer together without running into that possibility of shorting and well, exploding and we don't want to happen. So today's technology, how can we get more juice in a battery? We make the battery bigger. That's about it. That's where our problem is. We've got screens that are getting huge, high definition screens. They're using up lots and lots of power. They're very bright, they're very pretty, but they use a lot of power. Well, the bigger the screens get, and we talked about this before, the more processing power you have to have, both CPU and GPU. Well, the, the higher those run, the more power they consume. You also need more RAM to be able to kind of cache all the stuff that's going to go into the GPU and CPU and be processed and displayed for you. Well, that takes extra power. Oh, and guess what? Cramming all those in there makes it run hotter, which makes your battery kind of discharge faster. Not cool. So we've got all of these things that are making huge advancements and the specs are going through the roof. Quad core processors in cell phones? Are you kidding me? Okay, whatever. But high def screens okay they take up lots and lots and lots of power 
So everything is getting faster, hotter, and using more power to run, but our battery technology is still lagging behind significantly. In fact, in these electric cars that you're hearing about, and some of you might even own, by the way, if you own an electric car, comment, let us know. That kind of cool if you ask me. Anyway, back on topic. The batteries that they use there are essentially the same batteries that we use in our phones. And they're not all that advanced compared to all of the advancements that we're making in technologies in other places. So, our batteries holding us back? Right now, we're kind of teetering on the edge. We can always make bigger batteries, but people want skinnier phones. So at what point are they too skinny? At what point do we need to say, no, 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 no guys, let's start making our phones thicker so we can put bigger batteries in them. And at what point are we going to start getting bigger capacity batteries with higher tech in them that last longer? Come on, I want a battery that's gonna last me all week. Don't you? So that's what our topic is for the day. If you've got some thoughts about batteries, or if you'd like to correct some stuff that I made too simple, please feel free to do that down in the, the comments down below. Of course, give the video a big thumbs up, because by doing this stuff, we're learning more about our phones and our tablets, and by doing that, we're gonna be able to better understand how they use, in this case, electricity, and get more life out of them. We're gonna talk about uh, sometime in the not too distant future about how we can make our batteries last longer. Not longer capacity, but last longer so that we don't have to replace them and wear them out, which might be really, really important for you if you have a non-removable battery. So you'll wanna make sure that you subscribe to our video channel so you don't miss out on that in an upcoming episode of the Android Guy Weekly with Joe Levi. For Pocket Now and the Android Guy Weekly, thanks for watching.